Hello, this is Marcus Lee, and this is 7th grade math, Wylock lesson 25. Let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be learning something new revolving uh, squares and square roots. So on this first page, we're asked to evaluate the expressions. We're going to look at number 1. We have negative square root of 25. And when we when we're dealing with square roots, we're basically looking for two of the same number that multiply to equal this number in the middle. So, and with square roots, we're going to have some situations where the answer is a perfect square, and sometimes where it's little little different. So, if you've realized already, that's great. But twenty five, the square root of this is 5, and then we still have to account for this negative on the outside, so we'll have negative 5. And 25 is a is a perfect square, because 5 times 5 is 25. And another way to look at this is, if we look at the number inside our radical, which is this icon right here, or this symbol right here, we could write out the factors of 25. So 25 we can only get by multiplying 5 and 5, uh, aside from 1 and 25. And with square roots, we're looking for two of the same number. So we can use those 5 and this will become 5. Same thing for number 2. We have the square root of 16, and we'll get 4. If you think about it the way that I just wrote, we have 16 here on the inside of our square root symbol. We can achieve this by... 4 times 4, and that's this will give us 4. Alternatively, we can say, like, well, 8 and 2 multiply to equal 16, but then you could break down 8 and 2 and 2, 4 and 2, and then 2 and 2. So we have two pairs here, and then if you notice, we have another two pairs here. We stop breaking them down, obviously, when we can't anymore. We can't break down 2 into its factors without using one because it's a prime number. So we have two and two and two and two and these two pairs will multiply it to equal four because we, we look at them in pairs when we're dealing with square roots. So really we have two and two and then those multiply to equal four. I hope that explanation is a little more helpful. Okay, so moving on, like I said, sometimes our square roots aren't always perfect, but we can still do them. We have square root of 12 here, right? And 12 is not a perfect square, because um, we could do like 1 times 1, that'll equal 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, 4 squared is 16. And then 12 should come somewhere in between here, but there's not a perfect square, like I mentioned. What we do instead is... We can break down it into 4 and 3, for example, and then break down 4 into 2 and 2. So we have our pair right here, right? So with our pair, oh, with our pair, we want to put it on the outside of the radical. And then if you notice, this 3 is still left over. So that stays in the radical. So our final answer is 2 times the square root of 3, which is denoted like this, or written like this. Moving on, we have the square root of 8. Same principle applies as this last problem. We could do 2 and 4. And then we could do 2 and 2, right? And if we find that our two pairs match up to get 2, we could put a 2 on the outside. But this 2 is uh, on its own because it doesn't have a, we don't have another two to combine this with so this will stay inside our radical and we get two times the square root of two <coughs> okay so page two we're using square roots to solve quadratic equations first we have two x squared equals eight in this situation we're solving for x so of course we want to uh, divide both sides by two we get x squared is equal to 4. And then in order to undo this squared, we want to square root both sides. So when we square root an x squared, they'll cancel out. What will be left with x is the square root of 4. 
and you're looking at this probably and saying, well, it's 2, right? And you'd be correct. However, square roots are two numbers multiplied, two of the same numbers that multiply, basically, to make this number. And if you've noticed, two negatives, when multiplied, will equal a positive. So this is actually equal to x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. And we can check because 2 times 2 is 4, but negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. So that's why we have a negative here. So our final answer in blue is x equals plus or minus 2. And this plus or minus symbol comes in handy when dealing with square roots because it, it means that we have solutions both positive and negative. Moving on, we have b squared plus 12 equals 5. We want to get b on its own, so we do b squared equals, when we subtract 12 from both sides, we'll get negative 7. And when we square root both sides, we'll get b is equal to the square root of negative 7. <coughs> and the problem with this is that, like I mentioned in the past question, we could get two negative numbers to multiply to equal the inside, but no number multiplied by itself will equal negative. For example, if I multiply like 2 and 2, I'll get 4. And negative 2 and negative 2, I'll still get positive 4. So this radical, when we deal with square roots, we cannot evaluate square roots of negative numbers. So here, this is no solution. Okay. Moving on to number 6, we have c squared minus 25 equals 0. Move 25 over. Square root both sides. c is equal to the square root of 25 and we get c is equal to plus or minus 5. And uh, if you're curious, even though um, we did square root of 25 is just equal to 5 over here, we're just trying to learn the principles of square roots rather than actually start the plus or minus thing. But just note in certain situations what you will be required to use plus or minus or write it down at least. Okay, here we're getting a little trickier. 9m squared equals 100. Same thing, we want to uh, isolate the m. So we get 100 divided by 9. And this doesn't divide out evenly, so actually we want to keep this as a fraction. And when we square root, we square root this entire fraction. And so we're, we're going to get m is equal to the square root of this whole thing, 100 over 9. And this is convenient because 100 is a perfect square and so is 9. And just note that the square root of 100 divided by 9 is the same thing as the square root of 100 divided by the square root of 9. So if we, given that knowledge, we know that square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 9 is 3. And obviously, we want our plus or minus. So the answer to this equation, or this question, number 10 here, is plus or minus 10 divided by 3, or 10 over 3. And moving on to our last page, we want to do a little more equations with square roots and exponents. 3x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. x squared, or 3x squared, equals 3. After we move that 3 over, we want to divide both sides by 3. x squared equals 1. And divide, no, take square root of both sides. x equals square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1. And this last one, 4x squared minus 400 equals 0. Move the 400 to the other side get this x squared alone by dividing both sides by 4. We get x squared is equal to 100. Take the square root of both 
we get x is plus or minus 10. And that's going to conclude our lesson for today. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, hopefully if you rewind the video, I'll be able to, or this will demonstrate how to do it properly. And thank you for watching.